It's called Christmas is Coming by Gina L. Grandy. But I warn you, it's pure creepiness. Each year I watch you sleep. I like that you are still and breathing and quiet. And it's a game to keep you that way. Sometimes I'll move closer, carefully, carefully running a finger across your sleeve, touching my tongue to your hair, letting my beard brush your forehead. If I can, if I think you won't wake, I'll open a drawer. I'll press my thumb into the content and smile that you'll wear my touch unknowingly on your bare skin. And maybe I'll open a closet. Maybe I'll move something on the dresser. Just a little. Maybe you'll notice. I like that you may not. The cookies I'll eat, because why not? I'll think about you slumbering in the other room. Like the crumbs from my fingers. I'll hold the plate on my lap. Let it rest there. Eventually I'll fill your stock. Each gift I'll handle carefully, tenderly, before slipping it inside. I'll picture you in the morning finding what I left. Sometimes I'll have a pause and catch my breath. I'll think about this time last year and the year before. Each year is better than the last. Before I leave, I'll take one last look at you. I might whisper to you. I might lean close to your face and breathe hot air into you. Merry Christmas. Why is there a circle of lights in the sky? Is it Santa or is it aliens? Because I'm pretty sure that's freaking aliens. This story is the exact reason why you don't want carolers seeing this stuff out the front of your house this Christmas Eve. After being forced out of his family home for 40 odd years due to the expansion of a big hospital, old man Jones lived alone in this new place that he called home. But on Christmas Eve, he had these carolers just driving him crazy. Dashing through the snow in a one horse, all that stuff. With them refusing to leave, he decides to call the police. So he grabs his mobile phone, one of those old mobile bricks from the 70s, and calls the police, who tell him he's dreaming. But as the night goes on, they drive him crazy. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Pulling his hair out, he says enough is enough. Gets the brick again and calls the cops. Same thing happens and this goes on for hours. Until eventually a patrol car comes out. The officer walks to the front door and speaks to old man Jones. By this stage, Jones is fuming and he says, listen to them. But when the cop turns around, there's no one there. The officer points and says, I'm used to this day a drunk driver killed a group of carols out the front of your house. My favorite Christmas story is actually a World War One story. This is one of my favorite stories of all time and it's a special two-parter. But obviously I'm putting up part two right away because I'm never gonna make you guys wait. It's Christmas Eve in the first year of World War One. Tons of soldiers are barely 18. They've seen some terrible things and the Germans are winning. It's nighttime and the British soldiers start hearing some sounds. Dalignacht, Nacht. They realize their opponents are singing Silent Night in German. They take it as a challenge and start singing it louder in English. Eventually both sides start singing it together. Now just so you know, the space between both sides of trenches is called no man's land. If you show your face there, you will get shot and you will die. So when one German soldier started creeping over the trench, the British were ready to fire. So they noticed he was waving a newspaper and walking over. Go to my page right now for part two. Morbid Facts Christmas Special In 2018, a 66-year-old Canadian man was arrested for murdering eight people over a seven-year span. During that time, he worked as a mall Santa in Toronto. In 1932, Arizona, a man dressed as Santa Claus jumped out of a plane to parachute into a Christmas parade. Sadly, his parachute failed to open and hundreds of parents had to cover their kids' eyes as Santa plummeted to his death. 
This is a photo of a man dressed as Santa Claus visiting dying workplace children in a hospital ward in 1906. In December of 1959, a man from Los Angeles murdered his wife with a hammer before taking his own life, all while his three kids watched in horror. For the next 50 years, the house went completely untouched, as all of the Christmas decorations were still visible from the windows. Breaking news! 2020 has done it again! And Christmas as we know it is not going to happen! Now, as you may already know, Tonga here is the first place in the world to wake up to Christmas! Naturally, it was the first place that Santa went! Now, I've got to tell you, it doesn't matter if you believe in Santa or not. You need to hear this. Now, as we all know, being naughty or being nice is one of the key factors of Santa giving you a present or not. For one little boy, a very naughty boy, it has been a Christmas that Santa won't forget. Now, as the story goes straight out of the North Pole, it wasn't actually Santa's fault, but ironically, this little boy named Jonah. Yes, Jonah from Tonga just fucked up Christmas. See, Jonah wasn't naughty this year. He was badass. Not badass like Jake Paul, but more like murder people badass. Now, word is that Santa slid his jolly ass down Jonah's gym because his sister was nice. But as Santa stalked his way through their little Tongan shack, Jonah freaked out, leaped out of bed, and plunged a 10-inch hunting knife straight into the big man himself. Ouch! Now, it's not Jonah's fault. It's 2020. And I ask you all to share this and save Christmas. German soldiers started walking over no man's land on Christmas Eve. The British soldiers saw that he was waving a newspaper and they didn't shoot. He said to them in very broken English, If you no shoot, we no shoot. And he walked back. Next morning, the British soldiers were alarmed to see German soldiers just chilling on no man's land. So, they joined them. But in the daylight, it was terrible. There were dead bodies everywhere. Arms, legs, heads. But both the British and the Germans held joint funeral services and grieved together. Soldiers from opposing sides swapped Christmas gifts, one German barber gave haircuts, and the British brought out a football and started having a full football game against the Germans. But unfortunately, this would end. There would be no celebration of Christmas after as most of these soldiers would be dead. And those that survived had seen some terrible things and didn't want to celebrate anything.